previously on Insurance Dudes podcast. I don't want to get too deep into the weeds. You'll go out and grab it, at least now. Is it going to be that way forever? Maybe, maybe not. It's one of the reasons why my friend AI Craig is here. Yep, yep. Uh Uh-huh, yep. We ran the ultimate test. and He learned it, figured it out. He spent the most time perfecting it. And I'm sitting here thinking, man, that's a lot. There's a lot to that. We coined the term telefunnel because it is a funnel, but it's not like an online funnel, right? Because there's the phone involved. Insurance dudes are on a mission to escape being handcuffed by our agencies. How? By uncovering the secrets to creating a predictable, consistent, and profitable agency sales machine. I am Craig Pretzinger. I am Jason Feldman. We are agents. We are insurance dudes. What kind of measurable results and ROI have agencies seen from using Telefunnel? Yes. Okay. So talking about results and ROI, um, I love that question because I happen to have a slide from the webinar that is just ingrained in my mind when it comes to this. So I love it. Everybody talks ROI. In fact, when agents ask, you know, hey, what are you doing? How are you, you know, how are you writing 150? How are you writing 200K? What are you doing to make that happen? And I say, internet leads and we have daily specialists that transfer the leads over to our sales team. That's, you know, that's the quick and dirty. There's a lot that goes into it, but let's leave it at that. And then the second question inevitably is what's your ROI? My answer to that is it's two and a half times the market in two years. What? What do you mean by that? Well, this is what we've seen. And and it, it only works in those instances where the agent is actively engaged and following the telefunnel process, right? You can't, I know from experience, I have done some part of the telephoto process forever. Whether it was making the dials, whether it was having dialing specialists, whether it was getting the right amount of leads, but I never had all of it all together all at the same time. And that's the difference. So most of the time, it's difficult without understanding and having everything laid out in front of you, exactly what it takes and what numbers to be looking at, what metrics and and what to be saying and, and how to be coaching the team and all of the different components that are necessary to get the results. So in the beginning, I had no ROI. For me, 60 days in, I'm about to quit. Now, if you remember back to one of the earlier concepts when I was talking about the Dunning-Kruger effect, when I was about to quit, it was Christmas of 2019. I'm about to go on a trip to Hawaii with my family. I was like breath away from telling my wife that we're canceling the trip and I can't afford it and freak it out. It's going down the whole scarcity mindset. Save, save, save. Oh, protect, protect. I called Mr. Jason. It was like desperation call. I literally was crying on the phone like, dude, I'm effed. You know, I've charged tens of thousands of dollars on my AMA. In 30 days, I got to pay it. We have it improved. We're actually have a little bit less. We're on pace for less premium this month than we were last month than what we ended. And this is the second had to happen. And I remember mid jan or mid December having this call. And you know, if you've been around for any amount of time, you've heard the story, but it's one of these things that just in there and it's an important one for me. It was the defining moment in my career. Had I canceled, I don't think I ever amount to anything or would have been challenging, right? It would have been a big, big blow. So I would have asked something, but it would have been a challenging setback and and it would have been done for all the wrong reasons, the same reasons that there had been failures before. So luckily in the back of my mind, the logical part knew this to be true. And it was that phone call with Jason where he looked at everything, said, you know, settle down. You don't need to cry. You're still going to Hawaii. This is what you need to do. And what he told me didn't necessarily set me at ease. But two weeks later, when the results happened, I realized, you know, what had happened there. I'm at the point of stopping. Here I am at the bottom of the Dunning-Kruger. I'm down at the pit. Right around the corner is actually the liftoff. We look at the numbers and because I scaled up my sales team, and this was before we didn't realize this ratio, like you really want to have two to one, two dialers to one sales producer. But we had it flipped. I had two sales producers to one dialer and I wasn't getting enough leads. So we backed through the math again and I knew what had to be done. And he told me, Mr. Jason said, you need to buy more leads. You need more telemarketers. Do you think I wanted to hear that? Oh. Do you think I liked opening up my, my card to more abuse before I go on a trip with my family when I'm not sure? I did have certainty, right? I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it worked. Even though I'd seen it, I hadn't had it happen. And I'd failed so many times with internet leads that at this point, I'm thinking, dude, maybe I was right the whole time and they, they just suck. But a magical thing happened after I got on that plane. Because we'd already had a lot of activity going anyway, ramping it, we basically doubled the leads. I added, yeah, I added four more callers. I had four 
So now I have eight and it wasn't just double it. Now I got to wait. It was because everything was already being worked, just not enough volume. Adding in the right volume allowed for the older ones to start really warming because now we're pushing the new ones and the older ones. So we get a couple of the new ones in the beginning. But, you know, if you're looking at a bell curve, it's going to take a little bit while, a little bit of while to get to the middle. So a weekend, they start picking up. Two weeks in, right before New Year's, they're really picking up. And we, we run across the freaking the holiday like they are stampeding we end up hitting 100 and it was like 117 i think 116 it was somewhere right around there first time over 100,000 ever for my agency in 10 years right so it took 10 years i guess 11 if you count the new year so 2020 beginning of 2020 we cracked 117 and then it was all it was just all up from there until we settled at a at kind of a spot that that's good and i'm comfortable uh but that was a defining moment because it would have been very easy to eject the there was a lot of pain. There was a lot of fear. And I wasn't seeing a way out. I wasn't seeing that there was any chance to have this work. In my mind, I'm remembering all of the failures, not tying the fact that the wrong activity, everything was done wrong with them, right? I wasn't thinking like that. I'm just thinking they never worked. It's not working again. A equals B. It's over. Got to eject. And, and I've seen it happen countless times. We've helped so many people and we try to lay down this foundation. We try to educate and help people understand that there is going to be a time where it's too tough, where where there's too much on the table, there's too much at stake and the emotions get the best of you and you want to pull the plug. And that, my friends, is the moment that you need to push harder, investigate the numbers and see where you could add to push to capacity. That is critical. So knowing that and understanding that the true ROI, which is your return on what you spent today over the lifetime of that client, which is totally calculatable, that's your true result. So let's take the market, 8%, right? That's what everybody says, 8%. So if we took twenty five thousand, let's say we we decided, oh, we we had some, we had a great year. We just got a bonus, and there's an extra twenty five thousand laying around. Like I wouldn't be happy with that, but there was a time when I was. Had I taken that twenty five k, taken it out, and thrown it in the market, let's look at what would happen. So if I take out twenty five thousand, I need to pay taxes. Let's just say it's twenty percent to make it simple, and I have twenty thousand to invest. Okay, so if I invest that twenty thousand at eight percent, it's gonna take. Now I think I did it a little bit less. I did more for taxes. Taxes uh, spreadsheet, so I'm doing it from my mind. By uh, I'm doing it from the on the spot with a camera in my face. But it's around five years that it takes to break even. It may be a little bit sooner in this scenario, but let's just call it five years. Let's call it four years. Whatever, four years to break even back to that twenty five thousand eight percent, and it could it's four or five. Now flip it. Let's take that twenty five thousand and not take it out. So now I'm not paying the government five grand because we know what they're going to do with it. They're just waste it. So unless you're listening, we know that you do really good stuff with it. So we take the full 25,000, we invest it in the agency. Okay. Now, when we plug and chug into expected results of a telefunnel, given how it's performed over millions of dials, hundreds of millions, we have a hundred, we've crossed the hundred million mark. So hundred million dials of, of analytics. We know that within about two and a half years, we could make it even worse and call it three years. Let's call it three years, six renewals or five renewals. We know that the return is going to be about two and a half times. If everything works out, if all of the activity is done at the levels it should be and the appropriate amount of leads and dials are made, then it works out. So it's 100 million dials of, of analytics within two and a half years. That's the difference, right? Like just looking at the two vehicles to invest. If it wasn't your agency, if it was investment place number one and investment place number two, this one gave you 8% and this one gave you 250%. This 8% was over the course of five years. This 250% was over the course of two and a half years. Who you take it all day, right? Or you may say, what's the risk? Well, I mean, the risk on the one that performs better is that the person running the vehicle doesn't follow the orders, doesn't follow the execution plan. That's the risk over there. We have proven examples of every, of people being successful with it. That's the risk. Over here, well, market risk, investment risk, all of the different risks. So, and then of course, the market itself isn't necessarily the safest vehicle either, right? It is for long-term growth, typically over time, right? Of course, speak to your person. And I'm not talking about events. I'm just talking in general. So that is an important distinguishing feature. I'm going to call it quits there. I think AI Craig fell asleep. That's fine. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to pick up your copy of a Million Dollar Agency on Amazon. Link is in below as long as our guy cuts it in there. And we appreciate you. Thank you. If you have questions, email Emily at theidudes.com and she can get it over to us and, and maybe we'll bring up your name on the air. Yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm liking that. Talk soon.